Okay, folks, uh, I'd like to invite you to the uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting, July 2nd, 2020. It's uh, 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, I'd like to remind you, please speak up um, so that people can hear you. We had some technical difficulties uh, at the last meeting uh, when Diane was speaking. And uh, also, when you speak, if you could give your name each time you speak. Uh, Greg and Chan, you each have copies of the agenda. Uh, yes, sir. Diane, you may or may not, but I'll, you know, let me, uh, first of all, I'd like uh, to approve the minutes of the Ju June 18th regular Board of Selectmen's meeting. Gentlemen, I don't know if you've had time to review those or not. Yes, uh, there's there's still one one correction that I need, so, but, what I saw, okay. what I said. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. And more importantly, Cindy is also here. She is taking minutes, so it's most important for her to hear this. Okay. You want to hear that? Hey, can you just speak up more. Can you Please. hear me better now? Uh, yeah. All right. I don't know what what else I can do in here, but anyway, on the. Uh, First paragraph of the of the minutes where I I was making trying to clear up some issue about the procedure for the registrar or voters. Yeah. The last the last word says and if the voter wishes to vote absentee the voter returns the ballot. It's not the ballot, it's the application. Okay. That needs to be the application. They return the application, and then the ballot is mailed out to them, which yes. they complete, yes. and yes. then return. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. That's that's all I got for there, and did, and then and then there was a question about um from the north from the northeast district department of health about the uh, the wording where the population had decreased, not increased, and wondered if you ever got that clarified and then i see in the letter that is in our packets that it talks about an increase in the population so i assume yeah. that that answers the question right after you brought that up i contacted them yeah. okay. and you have a copy and chan you have a copy this is the corrected version right. and it was um, uh increase okay uh, that being said i'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the June 18th, 2020, Board of Selectmen's meeting with the correction as stated by Mr. Klein. Okay. I'm in favor. Okay, and I also. So passed unanimously, thank you. Okay, um, update on the town hall lobby. Uh, it's gonna be done by the end of next week. We have, uh, John Navarro has been in here daily. Um, we have another contractor that's coming in. Um, it'll be done again by, it's the lobby open this week. We've had people coming in using the service windows for uh, paying their taxes and also getting dog licenses and whatever else they need from the town clerk. That's worked out very well. Um, we had some protocols, masks were required to enter the building. Uh, if people don't have a mask, we can offer one. If they choose not to wear it, someone will go out and deal with them outside. There are people, uh, they are not required to wear masks, and uh, we cannot require them to enter the building. However, for the safety of the staff in the building, we're asking them to wear masks. Uh, no more than seven people in the lobby at, at any one time. We're asking them to practice social distancing, we have markers on the floor so people know how close they can get to somebody. We have disinfecting wipes and hand sanitizer for public use. Um, we also have the building assessors departments have computers for public use. Uh, those are now in the lobby. Um, and we're, we're trying to remind people, get word out, that many of the services in the town hall uh, can be utilized with the drop box outside by email, online, or over the phone. And again, the days of coming in and visiting uh, may be over. So that's where we are with the lobby. Uh, let's 
see, Town Beach, uh, it opened as of June 26. Uh, we have trash pickup, it's resumed. Uh, Porta Potty is gonna be dropped off next Monday. Um, one of the issues for me personally is uh, sanitation. Um, you know, with all that's been in the news and, and uh, online, et cetera, et cetera, about sanitation and everything, uh, we're just gonna have to leave it up to people to do the best they can. Um, my back, my uh, feedback, if you will, is people were thrilled to have the beach and then they were all complaining, no porta potty. So now they have a porta potty. Um, we do not have the, um, you can't have somebody sitting there sanitizing each time it's used. So anyway, they have a porta potty um, that will be delivered next week. Um, let's see, there will be constables on weekends from 10 to 4. Um, that's about it for the beach. I have, um, a question. I have one question. Yes, yes. Uh, I have I, I haven't been there in in years, but I know that years ago there was a bathroom, and it's still there. And 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 um, there and it did have um, a flush toilet. It does. Okay. All right. Is that is that available to be used by the by the community? No, it is not. Okay. The reason is issues around security, issues around cleaning it. Um, and so yeah, it, it's, you know, flush toilets, the whole nine yards, but the issue became, and this is why the court of John went in a couple of years ago is, uh, people were abusing it. People were stuffing rolls of toilet paper down. Uh, we had to get plumbers in there to remove the toilets to get the paper out of the pipes. So we decided, you know what, we're not going to do it. I can't say as I blame you. Thank you. You know, and, and Greg, the issue is people create these issues. They can complain all they want, but it's sort of like the same issue next door to us uh, with the park that belongs to the academy. And there were issues over there that people created so that the academy said, that's it. They locked the gates. Now, I think I had mentioned previously, they are opening it on July 6th. You did. It's going to be unlocked from, um, I believe it's 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., something like that. And overnight, it's going to be locked because, again, the academy's fed up with the uh, behavior of the public, if you will. Sure. Uh, so, yeah. anyway. Um, okay, that's about it on the town beach. Uh, beautification committee. Um, we, they went out. And they went out to Mackey's and to Spruce Dale and Walmart. Anyway, purchased a number of plants, shrubs, etc. We also had uh, mulch delivered uh, here to the town hall. Uh, two volunteers um, that uh, came under the direction of, of the uh, public works guys, uh, Ethan Adams and Sean Fitzpatrick, spent two days. Um, they're doing the gardens on the south side of the town hall. Um, a lot of planting, a lot of mulching, uh, did a great job. They also went up to the common and mulched around the rose bushes on the upper part of the, uh, the common that's on the edge of 169. They did a terrific job, uh, good guys. <clears throat> they weeded all the gardens on the east side of town hall. Um, they set up some containers with plants. So anyway, if you drive in, you know, you'll see that, uh, you know, this the side of the building towards the parking lot looks really nice now. And we're hoping to keep an eye on these guys because during the summer, we may provide more opportunities for them. Okay. I have, I have something I'd like to, I like to offer. I'm going to sure. be, at, I'm going to be having some, a, a quite a bit, and this is not just for the town hall. If you want it for anybody wants it, I'm going to be having quite a few of those orange daylilies. There already are some by the entrance I saw this morning, but I'm going to be having a lot of them um, available for beautification projects and some purple irises, which I think they might be known as 
Persian iris. Okay. And they're, and they're both spread. So, I mean, you know, if you have an area that you want to reclaim or something like that, that you know, or however you want to do it, but I'm, I'm going to be, they spread so much that they're, you know, affecting other things that we have here. So I'm going to be digging those out and some of it, they'll have plenty of it available. Okay, Greg, you said orange day lilies and purple irises. Yeah, and I think their purple irises might be, might be, uh, official name might be Persian iris. Okay. All right. Good and to know. You can have it. All right. Thank you. Yep. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Oh, Diane, uh, at the last meeting, Diane Miller had mentioned about uh, speed signs and comfort, and she sent me a photograph, uh, I think this morning, and I called Maureen Nicholson. They have two. They've moved them around. There's two ways you can do it. You can put it on a uh, trailer, much like you may see in other towns, many times owned by the police department, and it'll say um, speed limit X, your speed Y. And uh, anyway, they've been using them in Pomfret, and I talked to Maureen. She said they were purchased a couple of years ago. They're $3,500 each. Um, she said you can either put them on a post or put them on a trailer. They prefer to put them on a post, but you, they move them around because after a while, people aren't going to pay any attention. So they move them, especially on roads that they have complaints about. Um, they're solar powered, but she said a lot of times they'll bring them in after a few days to recharge the batteries. Um, and there's a record. Uh, it will tell you the number of cars that went by, perhaps the times, perhaps the speeds. So, um, again, Diane, thank you. It's something we may want to consider down the road. Because I know um, I get frequent complaints about joggers and bicycle people on uh, roads in Woodstock, and it's always the same roads. So it's something we may want to consider. Jay? Yeah. Jay? Okay. You, I think you answered the question that I have, but I want to elaborate on it. So I was asked by one of my colleagues about about these speed signs and, and do they have the capability of producing a record? So the answer is yes, they do. And you could tell how many cars went by there a, on a day and how, and, uh, and how many exceeded the speed. What the speed was maybe, something like that. Would that, but, then, be would that then be information that could be shared with Troop D and say, listen, why don't you pay particular attention to this location? They're pretty responsive in the point that I can call them and say we're having a number of issues with this particular road. Yeah. And they're okay. pretty responsive to have somebody go and set up radar for a period of time. Okay. The thing is, Greg, I don't think it keeps, I, I thought you were going for, will it give you a photographic record? Because um, as you may know, in some cities, you run a red light and you're going to get a ticket in the mail because it's a photograph of the rear end of your car. So your plate right. comes up and, and you get uh, a ticket. And that's been an issue with red lights. But uh, these don't have the capability of recording uh, tags for purposes of ticketing. But yeah, we, we pretty much know what the roads are. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see. Okay, that's that. That's this. That's this. Um, okay, we have no tax rebates. Uh, correspondence. I wrote a letter to um, the Office of Emergency Medical Services in Hartford in support of KB Ambulance wants to add another ambulance to their uh, fleet. Uh, they provide um, for us, paramedic uh, intercept for us. So when our, our uh, ambulances go out in town, KB is a paramedic intercept, so they'll follow with a paramedic. Um, they also are providing, they have an ambulance base in Pomfret at their station, and they're providing service to Pomfret, uh, I believe Ashford, Eastford, and there may be another town in there. And that's new, that just happened recently. Anyway, I wrote a letter in support that uh, KB, yeah, and I explained to uh, the director 
the issue of being in a rural area and how we're served by certain companies. Um, okay, and Greg, you mentioned I have a letter from Northeast Department of Health uh, just that they changed the um, the it was an increase in population. Right. Um, I'm going to note here uh, Civic this is regarding to the town website. Civic CMS apologizes for the delay in making the new website live. Out of an abundance of caution, we have decided to delay several website go lives until mid to late July. They're in the middle of migrating all Civic CMS websites to a new hosting environment. If the opportunity presents itself sooner, we will certainly migrate the website immediately and make it live. We want to launch the new website to go very smoothly. Again, we apologize for the delay in making your website live. Thank you, and we will be in touch. Sincerely. Um, I don't understand half of what I just read, but let me tell you, there's a delay in getting our website up and they think it'll be probably mid-July, and they're all apologies. So that's it. Um, we are, we're invited to the uh, 2020 annual meeting at Last Green Valley. It's going to be Sunday, July 19th, 1 to 2, uh, at Creaser Park in Coventry, Connecticut. Um, I, you know, again, they're talking about social distancing involved. It was just, you know, we were invited. Uh, I, will, I won't be attending, but uh, I believe in the last Green Valley, I think it's a terrific organization. Under correspondence, we also have uh, a letter of resignation. This is from Bill Brower. Uh, he's resigning to, from the Palmer Arboretum Committee. He has been there for 11 years, uh, 10 years as chair, um, and he's Palmer is a very special asset and it's very important to him. Uh, he just feels at this time it's appropriate to, uh, to resign. So we'll be sending him a letter thanking him for his support in the past. He's, he, he's the one who was responsible for really bringing that place back together. It was pretty run yeah. down at one point. Yes, yeah, because uh, we have met a couple of times, but when I asked about the background, I did get a lot of background about him and what he's done and arrangements he's made and, and that sort of thing, which I think is terrific. Okay, um, correspondence, announcements. That's all I have, gentlemen. Um, anything from the board? I don't have anything else. Are, are, we, gonna, yes. are we going to maybe consider th those speed signs? Yeah looking into them acquiring a couple or well no i'm looking into it yeah i'm not sure we'll be acquiring it anytime soon i'm saying yeah. that i understand i i really want to go over and eyeball it because the thing is it's sort of like if if you have signs in front of your house that say caution children because you have real grandchildren that they're not on the road but they're in your house you want people to be cautious the problem is, after a while, people ignore signs. And my concern with that is, if you live on Roseland Park Road, to pick on them, because I know it's an issue with speeders, and you're, you're calling me to complain because you have speeders, and I'm calling Truth D and say, geez, you know, if you could have somebody come out and just set up on Tuesday morning for a couple of hours, that sort of thing. But with the signs, after a while, they don't make a difference. The intent is good, but, you know, unfortunately, I just don't think people pay attention to them. Very true. But, again, I, you know, it's not a dead issue, Greg. I, I am continuing um, to talk to Maureen, and I want to go over to Pomfrey and kind of eyeball them. Okay, thank you. Right. Okay. The other thing I wanted to bring up under, under committee stuff is I had – Agreed last last meeting to draft a statement for us to review um, yeah. regarding the, the you know the issues of, of racism and police brutality and I did that and um, sent it to you guys and I wanted to 
see if you had a chance to review it and what, what your thoughts are. I well, did have a chance to take a look at it. Um, I'm not sure that this is a selectman's issue, first of all. And uh, it, it's something that I would not be uh, willing to sign. Greg, I, you know, when you first brought two weeks ago, and you had said that a colleague had approached you and had suggested, I guess, that you bring it to the Board of Selectmen. And I was thinking, you know, it's hindsight, but I was thinking after you mentioned that, I would have turned to the colleague and said, instead of you bringing things to me to bring to the Board of Selectmen, if you, he or she, were that offended, I would suggest to them, write a letter to the editor, write an editorial and submit it for publication. Because, you know, you have a colleague coming to you to suggest things for you to bring to the Board of Selectmen. Um, I had already, and I can reiterate if you wish, I had sent you an email, um, right. Greg, about, you know, feelings and, right. you know, just whatever. I, I mean, I can go through some of that information if you're interested, but that's pretty I, I, much pretty much my feelings about that. So again, uh, like Chan, as a member of the Board of Selectmen, I can't in good conscience support this as a board statement. That's your call. My, my, thought, my thought and, and the reason that, that this issue came up and, and suggested to me, for me to approach the board was simply because so that the feeling was that, that the board um, should maybe think about taking a taking a stance, letting the letting the community and the public know that that we're behind this, or that we're we're in favor of this, or 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 we or whatever, you know. And that's and that's you know that's that that was what the reason was. That's all. So um, I appreciate you drafting that, Greg. I really do. Um, but it's just, I mean, if you want to send a letter to the editor, speaking on your behalf, um, you know, not, not speaking as the Board of Selectmen, but then I would say, please go right ahead. I mean, that's, if that's something that you want to support personally, then. Right, yeah, I, I, I may would do that. I mean, I'm, you know, this will be needed to be changed around a little bit, but I'll, I'll, I'll do that, yeah, okay. And you know, it's interesting, you know, that the Civil Rights Act, of the United States was passed on July 2nd, 1964. So it's just coincidence that we're discussing this on July 2nd, you know. Good point. Would have been a good, a good catch if we, if we did approve it, then we could say, you know, we did it on the same day. The Civil Rights Act was, a pass, was passed, was approved. So anyway, okay. Um, I, you know, I, Greg, this is your call, and I'm going to defer to you, but for purposes of Diane, who is not aware, she is aware of, but hasn't seen your draft and that sort of thing, do you want me to hit the high points on, of the email that I sent you and why I feel I couldn't support it? You can. Um, how about if you let me read, read what I drafted? Sure, if you want. Yeah. Go ahead. Should I go with that first, and then you, and then you tell me, then you, then you respond that way. Right. That's fine. Even though, even though, in fairness to you, you didn't have this in front of you when you wrote that email back to me, but it says it there. So anyway, so this, Diane and everybody else that might be listening, this was, you know, we didn't, we did not come to any kind of a, of a, of a decision on anything. It's just that a statement probably would be. A letter to the editor pro probably would go out to different different communities um, within you know organizations within the community and things like that. But anyway, and so this is this is how I envisioned it being being stated. Um, the Woodstock Board of Selectmen wants all citizens to know that we support the sentiments behind the peaceful protest against racism and police brutality that are sweeping across our nation. We firmly agree that Black Lives Matter, despite the fact that President 
President Lincoln abolished slavery 155 years ago, systemic racism still exists. So this is a test of us. We hope that moral, ethical, and legal actions of citizens everywhere, backed by government leadership, will guide us to strengthen communities by eradicating racial injustice, hatred, and violence. And then it ended with a, please contact us if you feel the need for assistance or guidance in any of these issues. Okay. And again, uh, Greg, just your last sentence, please contact us if you feel the need for assistance or guidance in these issues. Boy, I don't know about you guys, and, and I got a background in counseling. I don't feel qualified. For one thing, I'm in the wrong color. But to contact us for assistance or guidance? I suppose if someone was feeling racial prejudice and what would, what would they, you know, and it was institutional or something like that, what would they do? And, you know, who would they talk to? Obviously, if it was in the school, they would talk to the principal or superintendent or headmaster at the academy. If it's not in the school, then it's in the town, then they got to go to the first electman, I guess. But in any case, that, that's, that's not going to be in anything that I might, may or may, may not send out, but, but uh, um, it was a thought. Okay. Um, all right, and Diane, again, just, just for you, I, um, before I had seen this, Greg and I had talked about it. He had brought it up at the last meeting. And I just sent him an email, and I, I just said basically the incident uh, in Minneapolis on Memorial Day was horrific. Uh, with George Floyd, um, and I said I, I will not comment on how much of the nationwide reaction is created and driven by the media. Um, there was a, a demonstration in town on June 14th, and one of the speakers uh, said, speaking to the crowd, where is the first selectman? Where is the Board of Education? Where is the Board of Finance? How do they feel about these issues? What side are they on? So already we're creating sides. And uh, he expected various boards and commissions to be at that demonstration. We weren't. And I just said, too often in this country and elsewhere, when a situation arises, professional athletes, the Hollywood elite, local, state, national politicians, and others fight over themselves to be among the first to get air time, photo time, audio time, or whatever time they can to denounce the latest situation. I find that, I, I resent that personally. And the general feeling seems to be in this situation is if you don't come out with a statement against, you're complicit. And in the current case, if you have no statement, you're a racist. So that was my reaction prior to reading uh, Greg's draft. But I, I wanted him to know how I felt about this whole thing. So again, that, that's where I stand personally. Um, so, if we, so if we don't have, if we don't have a statement, then our in in response to your your email there, does that mean that we're complicit that in this in this racism stuff? Is that, that's the is intent. That a lot of what? I'm sorry. No, I said that's the intent of many of these people that are demonstrating. If we don't have a statement, we're considered complacent. Or like the speaker that weekend at the, uh, the uh, comments said, what side are we on? So we're picking sides. So by not having a statement, obviously, we're not on their side. We're not supportive. Well. No. So, so uh, we just leave it that this gets dropped or that, or that, or that do we vote? If I make a motion to approve this and you vote against it, then we, at least we considered it and just, and said no, right? Oh, sure. You may make yeah. a motion. Right. I'll, I'll move that. I'll move that. We approve the, the, the statement that I drafted um, for you guys that I sent to you guys about, about this racism and, 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 racial injustice that, that that's sweeping the country. I okay. Motion. That motion. We have a motion. We have a motion on the floor. Uh, Chan? No. 
Okay. I vote no. Okay. Okay. And again, Greg, in your defense, as Jan said, if you want to change the wording on this and send it as a letter to the editor as a private citizen, you certainly can't mention Board of Selectmen or any of that, but if you want to send it as expressing your personal feelings about what's going on, you certainly are free to do so. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mention the that uh, that the uh, that it's not not coming from the board of selectmen, but I certainly could mention that you know I am a selectman, so I could sign sign it that way. I have that right. You could do that, but you you know you can state you're a selectman, but you cannot say as many letters to the editor for other boards and commissions in town. People will write, you know, in the interest of uh, uh, being transparent, I'm a member of this board, but this in no way represents the board it's my right. personal right. opinion right so yeah you, you can if you wanted to put you remember the board of selectmen but you have to put a statement in there distancing yourself and that that statement is only personal and has nothing to do with the rest of the board yeah okay all right I gotcha um anything else from board no all set Okay, uh, public comments. I, I don't know who else might be out there as far as, um, I mean, I, I can see Diane, but there may be others on the telephone or whatever. Is Any Rich public Roberts comments? On? Is Rich Roberts on you? I don't know. I've got something on my thing. It says Roberts on the phone. Yeah, that's me. Hi, Rich. Hey, how are you? All right. I, I heard this series had been renewed for another season and thought I'd watch. <laughs> well, new, thank you. You're very kind. It's a new fiscal year, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you, other than as an attorney, do you have any comments as a citizen, sir? No, other than uh, wishing everyone a, a great holiday weekend. Thank you. Same to you, Rich. Same to you. Thank you. Same to you. Now, our wishes to you. Is that up at uh, Winnipesaukee? Uh, hopefully by this time tomorrow, yes. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. Um, okay, any other citizen comments? There being none, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay, have a second. Got it. Okay. All right. We're adjourned at uh, 4.33 p.m. Okay. Thank you. Have a great weekend. And listen, to all care. of you, have a terrific uh, holiday weekend. Same to you, guys. Same to you.